talking about inverse kinematics, which is the problem that if you're given a manipulator and you know the forward dynamics or forward kinematics, uh, you want the the end effector. Okay, the you can think of this as a gripper. You want the gripper to be at a certain position. Okay, so that's the end effector. You need it to be at a certain position x e y e. Then what is the what are the angles at the joints such that you will achieve that particular configuration? So if you want to solve for uh, theta 1, theta 2, given x, e, y, e in that figure. So what I did was I wrote down the equations for x, e, y, e, and you could write that using DH convention, but in this case, you can just figure this out from trick, right? Okay, so two problems, power kinematics, given theta 1, theta 2, find x, e, y, e, that's one of your question in the homework. But what we're interested in is inverse kinematics. Given x, e, y, e, we need to solve for theta 1, theta 2. So for this problem, you might be able to solve for theta 1 and theta 2 analytically. That is, you want to find theta 1, theta 2, and there will be a formula. Uh, most times, it's very hard to find that analytical formula, so we never really use uh, at least in this course, we will not really uh, try to find analytical formula. What we'll do is we'll use numerical techniques to solve for, uh, solve for, well, we will not directly solve for F1, F2, but we'll just get the answer for X, E, Y, E by using what is known as a root finder. Root finder, an example of a root finder is if you want to find the roots of a nonlinear equation, F of X equals X cubed minus 2X squared minus 2X plus 3. One way you can do it, you can find analytically, right? You've done maybe quadratic, third order is a little harder, but you can still do it. Uh, fourth order gets uh, harder. Uh, if you graph it, you might be able to eyeball the roots, but that still doesn't give you the exact roots. So you have to do some kind of a, a numerical method, secant rule, Newton's absence, or some examples. Now, you do not need to program any of those because MATLAB has a function called fsolve where you tell it what that function is, f of x, you can tell it an initial guess. So you got to tell it where to start. You can start anywhere on the x-axis, uh, and then it will solve for xf. The issue with this method is uh, sometimes it doesn't give you a solution because you are too far away from your guess. Okay, that's the problem with most new Newton kind of methods. Uh, but actually, this f solve is pretty robust. It actually will give you a root. Uh, in this case, there are three roots. Right, the three points at which the red line passes through x equals uh, the x-axis. So in order to find the three roots, you have to give multiple x's, multiple guesses, and depending on your guess, if the guess is close to, say, uh, the root near 2, then it will converge to 2. If the root is close to 1, then the guess is close to 1, it will converge to 1, and so on. So we've seen that. Uh, I had shown you a program which does that. The function. This is the equation. I have um, f solve right here. And when I run this, it gives me the root, and I also made it plot. Let me look at the solution. So it gave me a solution of 2.3. So that was uh, the root which was in the far right side, and that was because I started giving a guess of 4. If I had given something close to 1, it could have given me 1. So uh, this is the idea, and we're going to use this idea to solve for roots of uh, the forward kinematics. So given x, e, y, e, so in, in, in this case, this, this one equation, in, in case of the two-link manipulator I showed you, there are two things you're interested. You want the end effector to be at a certain x, e, y, e, so there will be two equations. Okay, so let me write that down and then show you the MATLAB code which does this. Okay, let me do it this way. Let me show a more generic way of solving for the roots of 
uh, equation. So, uh, what we do is, since I told you we are interested in finding the position of the end effector, we uh, what we'll do is once we know the dh, we can find what the position of the end effector is. So, position and orientation of the end effector is given by this formula: a one zero, a two one, so on till a n n minus one, and all that boils down to something like this. So this is the position, right? Three numbers, x, y, z. For two-dimensional problem like the manipulator, it's just two numbers, the x and y. And this is the orientation. Okay. So uh, oftentimes we are not only interested in the position of my hand, but also my orientation, right? It has to be this way. Uh, I can be uh, also, we at the same point, but if I'm this way, then I cannot quite grip the cup. Okay, so in this course, we will not try to do. We will not focus so much on the orientation. Okay, we will not be solving uh, inverse kinematics when we're interested in orientation and position. We we'll only solve for position. So we do not care. We are not interested in having an end effector which is going to grip, but we are more or less interested in pinpointing to some point. So we are only going to restrict ourselves to O and if you want to go beyond that, then we can talk about it. I've done that in the past. So uh, there are three orientations which describe the rotation matrix that describe and three positions that describe O and zero, so position. So what we'll do, what we need to do is use F solve with three, uh, six constraints, okay? Uh, when you say roots, uh, the terminology which is more generic is called roots of the uh, constraints of, uh, of whatever the problem is. So with six constraints okay and the six constraints come from here okay so but what we'll do is in this case in this course we will mainly focus on on meeting only the position constraints okay so so to illustrate how to do this with matlab we'll motivate it with the two link manipulator example which i talked about in last the last class So what we'll do is uh, in MATLAB, set two equations for x, e, and y, e. And then use f solve. Okay, so C MATLAB. So I'm going to show you the code which will, given an XE, Y, it basically solve for the configuration of the manipulators that you are at that point. So if you have this point, you'll probably do this. It's fair to do that. Let's see that goes.
Okay, so this is a two-link manipulator. I uh, described the the DH parameters. You do not need to do that if you are uh, for a two-link manipulator. You don't need to do that, but I just did that so that you can generalize to more than two degrees of freedom. Uh, what I'm interested in doing is I'm trying to put the manipulator end effector at 0 0.5 comma zero. So Z is Z is not of interest because it's a tooling manipulator. So you want the manipulator to be on the x-axis, and it's actually of length. Uh, you can see a1, a2 is one, so it's one one unit. But I want to be it to be at 0.5, so uh, it will probably be well, position itself this way, right? 0.5. Let's see if you get that. Um, before that, f solve, and I think I need to show you what this function looks like. Okay, that function is basically the DH formula. This is my function. All it does is it takes as inputs the angles which are unknowns, uses A0, A1 to find A02. And in this case, I'm interested in the end effector position. So I look at the third, uh, third the fourth column of the A02 matrix. So first three elements gives me X, Y, and Z. And I'm only interested in X, Y, and I wrote Z, but then Z is really zero. So it doesn't really, it's not doing any solving over there really. So it's trying to match. So given that, let's run. <coughs> okay, so 0.5. Looks about 0.5 x axis 0 0.50 is where the end effector is. This is the start of the manipulator. This is where I want the manipulator to be. So it says 0.5 comma 0. And the solution is theta 1 is minus 1.3. It's minus because counterclockwise positive, clockwise negative. So the angle made by the first link with the x axis is negative 1.3. 2.63 just means that the angle made by this, um, uh, the line from 1 to 2 is 2.3. 2.0 is positive counter So it turns out for a two link manipulator, there are more than one solution. So if I change. Yeah. 2.6 No, it's radian. So it, by default, it gives radian. So if you want, there is a function rat two degrees, which will do it for you. So let's see if it makes sense. I can actually write, find the answer in. See, 2.63 times about 57 is the conversion. Uh, 57 degrees one radian. That's 149. It's 149 because uh, that's uh, that's the extension of length like one, and then that angle is 150. Does it look like 150? So if you extend this line, then this angle is 150. Maybe it looks like at least this is 90 degrees. So that looks like 60, so it, I think it's right. Uh, okay, so what I was trying, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the initial guess. As I said, for that function, when you're finding roots, depending on the initial guess, you got a different solution. Do you get the same thing over here? Uh, I, had, I tried a bunch of different initial guesses. Uh, here's another guess. I start, initially I started with positive, positive, I started with, now I start with negative, negative, and see if I get a different solution. I get a totally different valid solution, so it is doing that, which is also a valid solution, right? So it, it turns out that for a two-link manipulator, you will get two solutions. I can try something else. I think you get the, yeah, you got, even though I started with negative, negative, it gave me the, the first solution. Let's try this. Give me the second solution. So really, those your the answers you get depends on your initial guess. Okay. So you see that when you have more links, you will get more than one, more than two, maybe even uh, four, or five solutions. Uh, now you can extend this in multiple ways. Uh, let's say that you want the manipulator to draw something. Okay. If you want the manipulator to draw something, then what you would do is in this case, I'm interested in making the manipulator draw a circle. So the end effector should draw a circle. So 
In that case, I just ask it to go for to a certain point. Now I give it a set of points. Okay, the same code, but now I've given it a set of points and told it to find solutions for number of those points. So this code essentially takes the previous code and extends extends it to a trajectory, a set of points. So it solves for each of those points. And then what I did was I put it all together and it basically solves the same equation again and again. And uh, that is a circle. Okay. Can play it again. Okay. Okay, so one of your homework is going to be. Uh, You'll be drawing not circles but more complex. Okay, so the problem is let's call Q as our joint, one joint on the robot, T is the time. Okay, uh, when I'm doing any task, it could be end effector motion or the joint motion, I'm interested in going from one point. Let's call this Q O initial to Q F. Okay, uh, and I'm given this initial time. I'm given the final time T zero T F. The Q zero is the initial and final position. So imagine going from 0.5 radians to to say one radians in time uh, five seconds. So in this case, T zero is zero, T F is five, and Q zero is 0.5, Q F is one. Okay, so how do you connect the dots? Well, uh, all you care is going from one point to another. You can think of having some curve. Between the two points, you could, a straight line is probably the easiest. The question is which curve to use. Okay, so that is actually debatable. You can use any curve you want. Uh, uh, <coughs> most times we are interested in simple curves, right? The more simple the curve is, uh, the easier it is to program. And clearly if you start with, uh, the, the, the easiest way to connect Q0 and QF is to draw a straight line. So let's start with a straight line. So let's use a straight line. So simplest is a straight line. So what is the equation of a straight line? Well, it is Q, uh, so Q equals A0 plus A1T, where A0 and A1 are constants, which you got to determine, right? You know that the line should pass through Q0, QF, at T0, TF, and it's it's like this. Okay, so you can think of an equation of a line and you know solve for A0, A1 because of the slope and uh, the intercept. But another way to solve for A0 and A1 is you generate two equations for the two unknowns because that straight line passes through Q0 and QF. You can write Q0 equals A0 plus A1T. And it, since it passes through QF, you also have, well, this should be T0 plus A1TF, right? It passes through those two points. And now what we can do is from one and two, we can solve for 
a0 and a1 okay which is a fairly easy exercise right you can use symbolic toolbox and you can invert the so if you want to do it in matlab then what what you should do is i would write this equations as a0 a1 because those are my unknowns the first equation would fit in in this fashion the coefficient of a0 is 1 the coefficient of t0 sorry the coefficient of a1 is t0 and the right hand side is or the left hand side is q0 similarly 1 tf qf so what you need to do is a0 a1 is basically the inverse of the left hand side which I wrote down the matrix times q0 qf okay so what I would do is I use MATLAB to do that I wouldn't do it myself but uh, for this case it's can actually do it by hand so once once you solve for a0 and a1 you get <coughs> q0 tf minus q f t0 divided by tf minus t0 and a1 is qf minus q0 divided by tf minus t0. <coughs> so the equation for q is a0 which is q0 tf minus qf t0 divided by tf minus t0 that's the constant part plus a1 which is qf minus q0 divided by tf minus t0 times uh, t so if you put this equation inside uh, the manipulator essentially as a function of time then you will get the the joint to go from position q0 to qf in a linear fashion okay so i'm going to rewrite that equation here okay so what I'm going to do is differentiate this equation, differentiate with respect to time. So I get Q dot equals, uh, since the first term is a constant, the de derivative of that term is zero. So I'm only left with the second term, QF minus Q zero divided by TF minus T zero. So that's the velocity. So now if you make a make a plot of q versus time which you've done already q0 qf it's a straight line and if you do a plot of q dot versus time okay since we saw q dot is constant it's going to be something like this Okay, so here's the problem with what we've come up with. We said we want to go from uh, one position to another position in, uh, in the simplest fashion, which is uh, draw a straight line as a function of time. What it does is it, it forces the velocity to be constant, which means that if a manipulator joint is moving from one point to another in linear fashion, it is supposed to speed up infinitely fast. So right now the manipulator is at zero. Right, the joint is at zero speed. It suddenly has to speed up, go at constant speed, and go and speed down. Then speed down. 
Now, if you start doing something like that with joints, you want them to speed up infinitely fast, then you'll actually wear out the joints. It's a bad idea to do anything very jerky. So what we want to do is, uh, we want to change our uh, assumption of linear trajectory to something else, such that we do not end up jerking or changing the speed infinitely fast at time t0. So we want to ensure that, so the velocity is discontinuous. right here so and we want to avoid that avoid this this continuity okay so what we do is the simplest thing you can think of is uh, why don't we choose a profile as a function of time such that the velocity, so we get from 0 to q0 to qf from t0 to f, we want to, definitely want to do that, but we also want to ensure that the velocity does not jump from t0 to, in, in an instant, we want the velocity to be 0 here, velocity to be 0 there. So to avoid this, so the solution is, is the following. To avoid this, we impose the following condition. So the conditions are the velocity at t0 should be 0. Right? In, in that case, to the discontinuity, we don't want that to happen. The q dot at tf should be zero, so the end velocity should be zero, but we also want the manipulator to be at q0 at the initial time and be at q qf at final time. So we have four conditions now, okay? And a linear assumption for the trajectory will not make sense because we have four conditions. So when there are four conditions, you want to choose and you want to choose the simplest expression for the trajectory you want to choose a uh, equation which has at least four constants which you can set so four constants it would have to be a quadratic equation not a sorry it should be a, a third order equation not a second order equation so if you assume so this suggests it should be a third order equation. So Q equals A0 plus A1T plus A2T square plus A3T cube. Now that equation has four constants and that's the minimum order we need because we just have four equations. I'm going to write Q dot, that's going to be A1 plus 2A2T plus 3a3 t square. Okay. Next, I'm going to set up equations. Q dot t0 is 0. So that is equal to, so I, what I need to do is I need to put t0 equals, so t equals t0 in this equation because that's the equation for Q dot. So I get a1 plus 2a2 t0 plus 3a3 T zero squared. And I'm doing this only because I want to solve for the constants. Q dot Tf equals 0. So that's equal to A1 plus 2A2 Tf plus 3A3 Tf mm. square. And then Q T0 equals Q0 equals A0 plus A1 T0 plus A2 T0 square plus A3 T0 cube. And then Q T F equals Q F equals A zero plus A one T F plus A two T F squared. Okay, so we have four equations. Four equations, right? And four unknowns. 
a0, a1, a2, a3. And we can absolutely solve for those four, four unknowns. Okay, I wouldn't recommend solving them by hand. You can use uh, MATLAB. What, what I would do is I would put this as a matrix before I use MATLAB. So what you can do is if you do the same trick I did earlier, you can write this in a compact form like this. 0, 1, 2t, o, 3t, o square, 0, 1, 2t, f, 3t, f square, 1t, 0, uh, t, 0 square, t, 0 cube, 1 t f t f square t f cube and then we have a0 a1 a2 a3 are the unknowns and then on the right hand side we have 0 0 q0 qf so this is the one which you want to invert right you can do it easily in matlab once you solve for a0 a1 you get the following using MATLAB. Okay, so what you get is it's pretty complex. Let me okay. Ready to write this down? QF T zero square. You can try to well. You should check me on this. I believe I've done this in MATLAB, but it's been a while since I checked this. 3TF, 6T0TF, QF minus Q0, 3T0T. Okay, so that's how it looks. It's really not very important to write this. And I usually copy paste from uh, MATLAB. I don't really write it down by hand. Uh, so if you now try to look at Q, as a function of time. Remember, first we had a straight line. Now we assume a third order equation. Uh, you will see that Q will look like this. If you look at Q dot, it will look something like this. So it starts from 0, ends at 0. So it's nice because now we do not have the discontinuity at t0. However, if you take the second derivative of Q, so Q dot, you'll see that Q dot looks like this. So initially, it's the acceleration is 0. And then suddenly, you see this high acceleration spike. And then after it's done with the maneuver, the acceleration has to come back to zero very quickly. So there's a spike here. So we solved one problem, that is the velocity spike goes away because we start at zero, end at zero. But we've introduced a spike on um, the acceleration. Okay. So it's bad, right? Put that down. So the velocity starts and ends zero speed. 
there is a spike for acceleration at t equals t0 and t equals tf. So, how do we solve this? I think I just told you how to solve it. Right in what we did. You want to set acceleration to be 0 at t equals 0 and acceleration to be 0 at t equals tf. So, to avoid this, Set the conditions Q double dot at T zero is zero and Q double dot T F equals zero. Okay, so you will end up with not a third order equation now, you will introduce two conditions, you'll have a fifth order equation. But when you do this math, when you get this very complicated formula, if you try to look at the third derivative of Q. This is the second derivative. You know what the sec second third derivative is called? It's called a jerk. You see that the jerk is non-zero. It will be a spike. Okay, so you can then start uh, putting two more conditions that the jerk at t equals t zero is zero and t f equals zero. So you'll have a ninth order equation. But then when you take the fourth derivative, you know the fourth derivative is called. Was it? Huh? Was there? Okay. It's called crackle. Crackle. And then if you take the fifth derivative, you know the fifth derivative is called? It's called pop. So uh, you can keep increasing, keep adding conditions. more conditions, but really you get nowhere because it's really not, people usually stop at jerk, they don't go beyond uh, jerk, they are usually uh, stop at the fourth, third derivative, usually second derivative is good enough, uh, third is a stretch, but people stop at jerk, so this is normal, let me write this down. Uh, not really. Beyond jerk, I don't think they have any physical meaning. To jerk. So Q triple dot T zero equals Q triple T equals zero. Based on what we have talked about so far. Okay. Find a time-based parameterization for a revolute joint of a manipulator, so a single joint. The joint should move from 0 to 0 0.5 radians from time t equals to t equals 1 second. So let's write it down. So it should move from 0, so that's at t equals 0, to 0.5 at t equals 5 followed by movement from 0.5 radians to 1 radians, so 0.5 to 1 radians, this should be 1, and from 1 to 3, so 1 to 3 should go to 1 radians. Also the velocity of the joint at the start of motion, so you also told that start of motion at t equals 0, the velocity should be 0, and end of motion t equal to should be 0 so q dot equals 0 at t equals 3 and the velocity of the joint at the intermediate point so that's at t equals 1 should be 0 0.2 so q dot at t equals 1 okay so this is basically one joint and you're just told how the joint should move it should move from 0 to 0 0.5 0 0.5 to 1 uh, first maneuver in one second, second maneuver in the next two seconds. You are also told uh, that at the intermediate point at t equals 1, it should have a speed of 0.2. So, given all these conditions, uh, what you have to do is 
first you have to assume a minimum order polynomial you could do fancier and then you could do more terms but really you didn't get much benefit from doing that so i would choose the simplest possible equation first with constants which i need to find and then solve for this constants remember when we talked about uh, velocity condition zero for the start and end and two conditions for the velocity for the position we had four conditions so we are we chose a third order equation so in this case uh, what we'll do is for the first maneuver we we'll choose one equation a time based equation the second maneuver which is another one you could also choose one for the entire one but this actually makes your life easy so what i'm going to do is assume my first one so let's try to count the number of uh, parameters we would need in the first one so this belongs to the first maneuver this one also belongs to the first maneuver this one belongs to the first maneuver and so does this one No, it's not this one. My bad. This one belongs to first maneuver, right? So everything which has either t equals zero or t equals one belongs to the first maneuver. So you can see there are four conditions. Four conditions. So what we'll do is we'll assume a fourth order polynomial simply because there are four conditions. So I'll call that a one zero. Uh, the reason I'm calling a one zero is because I'm going to have two two time profiles, and I just want to be distinct in terms of the constants I use. A one one t plus a one two t square plus a three t cube. So this will be from t equals zero to t equals one. Okay. Now let's try to see how many. Uh, constants or how many conditions are there for the second maneuver from t equals 1 to t equals 3 so we just see everything which has either 1 or 3 so here is one of them here is another one so you can see that's a common one the first, the one which i showed earlier uh, here is another one and here is another one so that is also three conditions or uh, four conditions so for the second one we'll also assume we call this q1 q2 t a to 0 okay so now we have to solve for the four, the eight constants and so we'll just set up those eight equations because it's eight because of those eight conditions so eight conditions okay if you want to write them rewrite them in a in this if you if you want you can write them like this q1 0 equals 0 so that's least confusing so the first one i wrote down as in terms of q1 because q1 is my first trajectory then i wrote a uh, q uh, then i'll write q1 at 1 is 0.5 the next condition for q is q q1 is q dot 1 at 0 is 0 and q dot at 1 equals 0.2 that is this condition similarly i'll write the eight conditions for q2 q2 at 0 sorry q2 is doesn't start at 0 it starts at 1 right here is uh, sorry here it starts at 1.5 Q2 at 3 is 1. Q2 dot at 1 equals 0.2, and Q2 dot at uh, 3 equals 0. So those are the eight conditions. All I got to do is 
sub this in those two and get eight equations and then solve for the eight equations. Okay, so how does this eight equations look? So Q1, zero equals zero equals, let's sub this in the first equation. So I have A10 plus, only A10 remains, right? Everything else is zero. Uh, Q11 equals 0.5 equals A10 plus A11 plus A12 plus A13. Third equation, Q1 dot zero. So I, I'm going to skip a step, but you've got to first differentiate this expression and then put in zero. So when you do that, you get A11 only. Then Q1 dot at 0.2 equals 0 0.2. That will give me A11 plus 2A12 plus 3A13. Next we go to Q2. Q2 1 equals. So Q21 equals 0.5. Q23 uh, equals. 1 q2 dot 1 equals 0.2 and q2 dot 3 equals 0. So let's put these things in. Yeah. q1 dot 0. So I take q1, I differentiate q1. With respect to time first, so I, I would have yeah. This will do, only this will remain a11. So what about the a12? a12 will become zero because when you take the derivative, we get two a12 times t plus three a13 times t squared. When you put t equals zero, this will cancel. This will cancel. So I first take the derivative and then do it. So I skipped a step. Sorry about that. Uh, so let me write this down quickly. Uh, just running out of time. Okay, so let me do one thing. Let me finish this later on, but essentially you get eight conditions, right? Eight conditions, so eight equations, eight unknowns, and you have to solve for the eight unknowns. That's something which you'll make MATLAB do. Uh, what I'll do is I'll post code which does this. Okay, you don't have to do it by hand. And I will, there was another problem which was very similar veins, except that I just changed one con condition. Okay, uh, so I, I, I can maybe do it next time. Okay, so I think there's a career fair on Tuesday. So we can just skip class. I don't want you guys to miss that. Uh, and then on Thursday, there will be a lab, your lab one grading. So please come to the class with your, uh, with your uh, uh, robots.